Welcome to the first episode of a new series uh, where I'd like to show and uh, explore a project I'm working on, which is a library and an application that is a, accompanies the library itself that allows you to define the rendering of in your application using a graph. Uh, if you're familiar with, for example, Unity's uh, shader graph this is going to be very similar at the beginning i don't have the shader part yet at the moment it just defines the pipeline itself like all the post processors and all the other stuff that you might want to have in your application to in the rendering part and the reason for this why i created all this is because there's a huge barrier of, barrier of entry for any developers to create uh, games or any other programs using libgdx. Um, instead, now you, using this application, you'll be able to just with two lines of code and a couple of clicks in the this application that I'm showing at the moment on the screen, you can define your rendering and you don't have to really know anything about OpenGL or anything stuff, any, any stuff like that. So let's start off with creating a new graph and the way we do it from a template, at the moment there's only one, which is empty one. Later on I'll be adding more with some predefined um, behaviors already that you can just as a good starting point for doing whatever you want in your application. So I'll start with empty. As we can see in here we have the end node, which, which you cannot remove, it has to always be, because this is what, exactly what the pipeline is using to actually get the output from and render it to either the screen or to texture or whatever you define it to you want to output it to so let's uh since we have an end we have to have a start so the rendering we have a start and this is basically the beginning of the pipeline um as you can imagine in opengl this start has two properties that you can set background color which is the color that's going to be filling the screen at the beginning uh, when it's getting the pipeline is getting rendered default is black and the size with by default is the size of the uh, off-screen buffer is going to be the size of the screen so what we have to do is now just connect these two and we can now save the pipeline so i'm gonna save it to episode one.json here in my project and as you can see this file is get, got saved here it's a json file and it contains all the, all the information that is needed to, first of all, show this graph in the application here, so I can open it later on if I want to modify it. But also, this is it contains all the information that is needed to generate a pipeline in my project. So let's take a look at the project quickly. So we have this simple thing. Uh, so this is the application adapter in libgdx that uses the pipeline. So in the create, we are loading it. And to load it, we get a stream. In this case, I just get this from this file, but you can have it in your library. So it's going to be GDX files uh, internal or whatever you want. You can use it from URL, up to you. And this is actually the line that actually loads the pipeline. Very simple. And here we have some extra stuff that we can set some stuff on the pipeline some properties or whatever i'll show it later um, and we and of course in the dispose we have to dispose of the pipeline it's important because the pipeline itself when it's being loaded it might uh, create some resources that are being used and you have to get rid of them uh, and also in the render method we are getting the delta time and this line basically tells the pipeline to be rendered we pass the delta and we tell it where to render and we don't want to draw it to screen you can specify some other stuff like draw to texture or save to file or whatever there's going to be stuff here at the moment this is the only possibility and uh, i have here one more thing that i'm doing is this is just for the purposes of demo is that whenever i press an r key I dispose of the pipeline and reload it from the file. So let's run this quickly and to see 
you should be seeing a black screen because that's the default as I said for the start pipeline start node yeah we are seeing black okay so now let's make it a tiny bit smaller and put it here and we can now let's modify so how do we pass here we can for example pass uh, as a value and sure let's go with let's go with white color so we are saying that this color which is a value node should be put into the background color of the start so we save it and then here as I said when I press R it's gonna reload the pipeline great uh, if you modify it here and save it we reload this is the color we have here okay but that's not very useful because if everything has to be done here and you from your program you cannot change the even the background then it's pretty bad so how do we do this well we can expose our graph can expose properties so we want to ex expose a color property let's call it background color and in here we specify the default for it let's go with with white so in here instead of value we're gonna set a property so let's save it and if you reload it's gonna be white that's because the default is white so how do we set these properties from our program well as I said in here you can at any point in time you can modify the properties of the pipeline and the way we do it we just say set property it has to be the same name as we have in the our graph let me quickly look so yeah the name is background color and the value of the color property is the unsurprisingly the dipgdx is color and let's go sure with orange so this line of code basically passes the value of the property that we have in the pipeline and you can modify it in runtime and it draws orange okay that's it for the first episode um, so in this episode we explored the end node and the start node which allows us to generate the smallest possible pipeline and and i also showed how to create and how to pass value to properties from our program and also some other values that you can specify in here um thank you for watching and uh, if you'd like to be notified of any new developments on the on this project and see some other videos uh, please follow the channel uh, the code of the application as well as this whole uh, test will be available is available on github i'll put the link in the description the application and everything that's in this project is uh, using the, the code that i wrote is an M, under MI, mit license so feel free to use it for your application your games and maybe you can even contribute if you want um, so thank you for watching and i hope you all you'll follow my channel. Bye.